All right, Matt, I've got the perfect movie for you. It's a ripoff and a dumb versus movie, and it has been entirely too long since you covered a dumb versus movie. Yeah, and not long enough since the last stupid ripoff I looked at. Okay, you know Alien vs. Predator, right? And James Cameron directed Aliens. So what if the aliens were fighting something from a James Cameron movie? One of the highest grossing movies of all time, an absolute classic that will never lose cultural relevance. Avatar. Okay, have you actually seen Avatar? Like, once a long time ago? When was the last time you even thought about Avatar? Oof. Uh, probably when the Disneyland world opened. Also, real quick, uh, the alien is the one that can turn invisible and has supervision, right? <sighs> Just give me the movie and let's get this over with. There were some movies. Terrible movies. Movies so awful. No one would touch. Then came a Matt. Sad little Matt. Matt then decided these movies to watch. Today's episode, Aliens vs. Avatars. <sighs> Hello, Navi. I am a character from Avatar. Jake? Was the main character's name Jake? I'm Jake from Avatar. Should have gone for an alien reference. And today we're dealing with the rare triple threat ripoff. And maybe we shouldn't be too surprised by the ripoff, since this comes to us from amazing bulk director, Louis Schoenbraun. Here he's a nice guy, no hate for the dude. Although I do take issue with some of his movies. Film was written by Ted Chalmers and Keith Parker. Keep those names in mind, they'll be important later. And David Sterling is credited with IDEA. Yeah, you really stretched your creativity there, David. Definitely worthy of a credit. Also, I somehow ended up with a Thai copy of the film. I thought this text on the cover was supposed to be an alien language, but nope, it's just Thai. I don't know how this happened, but it plays in my Blu-ray player, so whatever. So let's find out who would win. An unstoppable killing machine, or the peaceful race who hasn't advanced beyond spears? This is... Aliens vs. Avatars. Yeah, I bet you're real surprised this is from the director of Amazing Bulk. Don't worry, this movie does have real locations. These girls hike out into the woods when a meteor crash lands with the aliens on board. And... eh, it's not the worst alien I've ever seen. And he turns invisible. Y you know, like the Predator, a and not like the alien. Seems like we've been walking forever, and I'm ready to party! Woohoo! You know you guys can drink and hike at the same time. In fact, I kind of recommend it. And these girls are out for an all-girl weekend with just two people. I want us girls to just get away for the day, you know? Have some fun in the sun on our own. That's cool. It's kind of nice not having them around. And this girl just carries a fucking wine glass in her backpack. Not the safest move. Then we see a blue alien in a spaceship with lots of advanced computer screens and technology. You know, like the Na'vi from Avatar. A very technologically advanced species. You got a little on you. Shit, I gotta get that out. Yeah, baby! <laughs> Shut up! Hmm. Starting to think there's a little more to these two women going to an isolated cabin in the woods by themselves with a glass of wine than maybe we were led to believe. Hang on a second! I want to check something out first! It's your ass! I thought we were here to drink and get some sun. Why would you go to the woods to get sun? 
Oh, so we could have a topless scene in the first ten minutes. And look at this. This woman is out here to bang her friend. There is no other explanation for this. Two bad predators here to break it up. Oh, uh, I mean, alien. They're called xenomorphs. Fuck you. So we meet the main characters. Jock, I mean, Jake, his name's Jake, and Tyler. Look at you, and then look at me. There's no such thing as easy when you look like this. What? How? Because glasses? Is that it? This is a very attractive person. Maybe a little plain looking, but certainly not ugly. Like, could you have tried just a little to make him look like a nerd? Dude, you're 20 years old, and the only two people that have touched your Johnson are you and your mom. Not even his doctor? Dude, you gotta get that checked out once in a while. You wanna get a hernia? How many people do you think actually stay with the first person they lose their virginity to forever? None. I guarantee it's more than zero. It might be low, like 10% or less, but it is not zero. And the longer Windows XP just sits there with no explanation, the more curious I get. Just not gonna explain that one, are ya? Then we meet the four girls. Tiffany, Jock's girlfriend, Jesse, Tyler's childhood friend, Dana, the nerdy girl, and First Blood. They're going camping, and of course, there's no cell service. And Blue Alien makes a human body she can control. Yeah, you guys remember in the movie Avatar, the Na'vi made avatars of themselves so they could interact with humans. That's the plot of that movie. I chipped a nail setting up that stupid tent. Oh my god, did you really do a chip the nail joke? What is this, the fucking 1980s? <sighs> Women in their nail polish, am I right, y'all? Anyways, they leave First Blood by herself because she doesn't want to come help. <laughs> I'm sure she'll be fine. Anyways, Jock and his girlfriend decide to make out near the lesbian's cabin, and we get this awkward interaction. What's that smell? Mm -hmm. Smells kind of like fish. Fortunately, I really like that smell. <laughs> All right. Mm. Mm. Okay, first off, no you fucking don't. You might endure that smell because you like eating pussy, but no one enjoys that smell. Second off, uh, in what universe does a dead human body smell like fish? We're red meat. We should smell like rotting beef, you know? Thirdly, and this is probably the most important part, how do you not notice a dead body that close to you? Oh, uh, First Blood actually survived. And only makes everyone hate her even more. I give her six minutes tops. She tries to get it on with Tyler, and he is not okay with it. I'm smoking hot and you're a fucking nerd. If anyone should have a problem with this, it should be me. Now, I don't want to insult this actress. Perfectly lovely actress. She, she's very attractive. But frankly, Tyler is the hotter person in this relationship. It's just how it is. You can forget about ever getting this close to my panties ever again. Oh darn, he's really gonna miss out on the last few minutes of your life. Have fun running into the woods alone! On the other hand, the dipshit from Planet X can turn invisible and shapeshift but instead he just chases the girl through the woods. And wow, these special effects are amazing. No, really. By comparison, these effects are amazing. Jock and his girlfriend have a drawn-out discussion about their relationship. Odds are against even one of them surviving, let alone both, so it sort of feels pointless. They go off looking for first blood and find the avatar near her body. So they tie her up and question her. She gives them a painfully detailed description of how the Predator came to be, but I'll be honest, you don't need this. Evil aliens don't need a backstory. They can just exist. That goes for you too, Ridley Scott. Also, I think the camera guy got a little distracted by something. She tells us they can turn invisible and shapeshift. Something that has already been demonstrated. My people developed an army of droids 
known as Robotars. Tell me that woman did not just say, Robotar? And then we find this Robotar and turn it on ourselves. I'll give these actors credit. I don't think I could say the name Robotar with a straight face. Tyler, Jesse, and Avatar go looking for the Predator, but Jock stays behind with the others with a malfunctioning force field. Also, worth mentioning, I started calling this woman Avatar as a joke, but her name is fucking Ava. So yeah, her name actually is Avatar. And I thought the love triangle was gonna be nerdy Dana versus the lifelong friend Jesse vying for Tyler, but it looks like it's going to be Jesse versus Avatar. I mean, hard to argue with a leather jumpsuit. Plus, Dana wanders off alone because she thinks she hears first blood. Gotta be honest, wasn't expecting her to die this quickly. I thought for sure it was gonna be Jock's girlfriend. Maybe Jock, but not Dana. I guess that's one they got over on me. Your son appears very weak. I am surprised that you don't have a second one to take its place. Your son appears to be about halfway through its life cycle. This planet will have a short life. Wow, oh, that sucks. Your race will surely die with this son. What the fuck? What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Jock and his girlfriend get into another argument, just not noticing Dana's gone. Good to know where she stands with you guys. Anyways, Jock and his girlfriend get killed. Wow, this really justifies all the time the movie spent on their relationship. But for a minute, the Predator almost has Tyler and Jesse convinced he's Jock, until he screams like an idiot. But that's okay, because Tyler's also an idiot who decides to run up and shove the Predator over. But that's also okay, because it works! What is the opposite of an apex predator? Like, the weakest possible predator that could exist? Like, barely a step above scavengers on the food chain? And here's the climactic alien versus avatar fight. She pushes his head, stabs him, and he runs away. This thing is so weak, the poison ivy it just sat in could probably kill it. Oh no. What is it? Well, it's made of rubber, so there's your first problem. This is just like the day the Earth shits to- Mmm, not really. I mean, there's an alien robot, but that's about it. I need you to press this button and pull this lever. But only once Tyler has finished. Got it. Oh, but let me stand clear of the door before you do that. Luckily, it does work and manages to take a couple shots at the Predator before Tyler stabs it with a big stick. Then fucking Robotar just blows it up with a missile, which I'm pretty sure is overkill. The stick was probably enough. Also, I love that as soon as Avatar says they're done, Tyler and Jesse just walk away. The mission is complete. We have succeeded. <sighs> Oh, we defeated an evil alien. Later. Also, Avatar's ship blows up? I, I don't know why, it just does. And despite that, her avatar says thank you even though the blue alien controlling it has been dead for a couple minutes now. Look, my nails match the box. Anyways, that's aliens versus avatars. I don't know what else you expected. It's not the funniest, but the sheer audacity of some of this makes it pretty fun. It is a pretty typical teens in the woods horror movie, but the Avatar and Predator elements make it way more interesting. Definitely something you could throw on and laugh at with friends. I recommend it. Although the title is clearly Aliens versus Avatars plural, even though there's only one alien and one Avatar, Anyways, uh, if you want another movie that rips off Alien a little more than this one did, Alien 2 on Earth. And uh, I gotta say, good call on that one, other Matt. Uh, you got anything else like this? Oh yeah, I've got another one where the aliens take on another James Cameron property. Oh uh, yeah, let me guess. That's right, Titanic.
sucks. Your race will surely die with this son. This nail polish is very wet. I did not bring napkins. I should have done that. You get up and grab a napkin. Fuck. Oh, I don't know how that happened. The paintbrush got stuck inside. <laughs> there we go. I am too clumsy to be doing nail polish. I shouldn't have done this in a white shirt. <laughs> Luckily, I'm keeping my hand very far from my shirt while I'm doing this. But white shirt, not the best choice. And here's the finished product. <laughs>